Check the description for the following discount codes. Before we get into the video, don't forget Sim Racing Studios Power Win Giveaway Competition is running right now. Details in the description. It's been quite a few months now since Link came out of beta and it's been continually improving over the month with little tweaks here and there. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is, do you still use Oculus Tray Tool, Carl, or Oculus Debug Tool? Are there any reasons to go in there and tweak the options that we used to tweak before Link came out of beta? And for me, I do make two tweaks, which I'll show you in a second. But we'll look at Oculus Tray Tool first. That's what I used to use and occasionally still use to have a performance overlay in Oculus exclusive titles. You know, see my frame rate, see if um, ASW is kicking in or anything like, just sort of to monitor what's going on. But what I also used to use it for, and this doesn't really apply to Link as such, was back in the day when with my CV1, you could apply like a default super sampling setting on a per game basis or just a default one that does it, that does it across all games in Oculus Tray Tool to sharpen up the image a little bit if you had a graphics card that was good enough. Um, so I haven't really used Tray Tool for much at all um, in recent months, as I say, aside from the occasional uh, performance overlay, which in fact, let's get some screen capture on the go, which you'll see down the bottom here, the visual HUD, you've got performance, pixel density, ASW status, latency, timing. I will occasionally use that um, just to see how well a game is running, but that's really the only thing I use Oculus Tray Tool for these days. Now, I don't know when this was added, but there's a Quest Link tab here on the left-hand side. Um, I actually only noticed it today whilst making this video. Um, it, it points out here, obviously, it doesn't affect the Rift CV1 or the Rift S because it's for Quest and it's over Link. Now, there's some presets here based on graphics cards, which is interesting. Um, and it changes the same settings you see here that you also see over here on the left-hand side in Oculus Debug Tool. Now, previously, or the last time I played around with these settings, they weren't in the Tray Tool, they were only in Debug Tool, but it looks now I don't know when it was updated, but it looks like it's got these here, which is interesting. So you could try those if you wanted, but I find the encode resolution, there is no need to change that at all these days because Link has its own render resolution slider in the Oculus software. So I wouldn't change that. In fact, I wouldn't use, the, um, I wouldn't use any of those presets. The two settings I do change, um, which I do in debug tool in actual fact, because I didn't realize this tab was here. Um, and whilst it looks like, yeah, when you have it disabled here, look in tray tool, you actually can't click on the distortion curvature one, which is one of the two settings that I do adjust, um, but you still can change the bit rate. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that one. I would use debug tool over here and I set the distortion curvature to low. And the reason I do this, if you read the text here, it says override distortion curvature. Distortion curvature, is how the image is rendered sharper in the center and gradually rendered at a lower resolution as you get towards the edges of your display or field of view. And this is to aid performance. When you're looking dead center straight ahead, that's where you want it to be at its sharpest. What's happening around the edges of your peripheral vision is slightly blurry anyway. If you just sit here in normal real life and try and focus on the edges, with your eyes straight forward, you'll see it's slightly blurry, you can't focus on it. So there's no need to, to render those parts at really high resolution because we won't notice it anyway. So the way it's worded here, override distortion curvature, higher curvature gives more pixel density at the center. Now it doesn't actually increase the density at the center. It, well, it kind of does. So let, in fact, let's, how can I describe this? If you have this on, high, then you'll have a very small area in the middle of your display that is sharp, and then it'll very quickly drop the resolution as it gets further off center. If you have the distortion curvature on low, then a larger area in the middle will remain sharp before it gradually drops off to a lower resolution at the edges. So that means if you were to look around with your eyes inside your headset, it will look sharper, more off center, and the closer it gets to the edge, it will still be quite sharp until you get to sort of the very edge where it really drops off. Whereas if you have that on high, you'll only have that sharp area in the very center, 
And as soon as you look off center, you'll notice it's, it's blurry and it's not sharp. <clears throat> Again, this is a performance thing because if you render um, a sharper image larger in the center, you know, more pixels, it's gonna put more strain on your graphics card. But I leave that on low, which because I can't stand having a really blurry off center image. The G2 suffered with that, or at least mine did. As soon as you look off center, it's just a blurry mess. and I really don't like it. Um, so I set that to low, so I've got maximum clarity within my field of view for as far as is possible. Um, and again, for whatever reason, over here in Tray Tool, if you don't use one of the presets, that option is disabled. I can't click it, I can't get this drop down menu. So yeah, debug tool, I set that to low. Again, encode resolution width, like I mentioned a second ago, because we've got the slider in the Oculus software, we don't have to do that here now. You can just leave it at zero. That's exactly what that render resolution slider is for in the Oculus software. And then the final one that I adjust is the encode bit rate. By default, if you leave this on, I think if you put it on zero, it uses a default um, Oculus software setting. I think default is about 120 over USB 3. I, I did a video about this, so I can't quite remember now. But what in my testing, and what I did was actually test the USB bandwidth usage as I increased this bit rate. So like if you start at say 50, for example, there was very little data, very little bandwidth being used on my USB 3 port, and gradually as I increased it, I could see more and more bandwidth being used on my USB 3 port, right up to 300. Anything over 300, there was no additional information sent down the USB port, which means you're not gaining any additional clarity or quality. So most you want to go is 300, and there's no reason not to run 300 unless your graphics card is particularly poor and struggles to encode well. I know some of the AMD cards just don't do well with encoding video, which is a real shame. Um, but yeah, 300 is, is the sweet spot going any higher, it's just a waste of resources because it doesn't send any more information down your USB port, which means your image is not gonna improve or change in any way, shape or form. So that's really, I'm not gonna go for all the options on here because really this is all that I use these two tools for. And for the most part, we all used to use them to tweak distortion curvature, the encode resolution, you know, to get a sharper image and the bit rate. Um, and, and again, with the Oculus Tray tool, sort of super sampling and stuff for the older headsets. So they're, they're not really used that much these days, at least not for most of us. Obviously, there will be some of you out there that they want to have a tweak with all these other things. The, the field of view tangent multiplier, I've not even looked at that, um, and I've, I've got no reason to, because I can imagine if you're adjusting the field of view tangent multiplier, your image is going to change and, and distort slightly, and I, I, you know, for me, I don't need to dick around with stuff like that. Having the, you know, the sharpest image possible is what I like. Having the least amount of um, uh, compression artifacts noticeable with your encode bit rate is very important to me. Um, but you know, again, we've got we've got a visual HUD we can use at the bottom here for monitoring performance and what have you. Again, as well, so you can if if you want to, if you're more of an advanced user and you want to play around with these other things, of course you can. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just telling you what I use it for these days, which is simply distortion curvature low, and encode bit rate 300. Everything else I just leave on default and it all works fine. You know, and and Link looks good these days at those settings. You know, there's there's not a huge difference between that and a you know a dedicated PC VR headset like the G2, for example. From a clarity and compression point of view, obviously there are other differences. The G2 has much nicer colors, for example. Um, but I find, you know, with it maxed out at 300, the image is good. You know, I don't see noticeable compression, um, no banding, no compression in the blacks or anything like that. It does look good. And with the distortion curvature on low, it's a nice sharp image, you know, in most of the areas that you're looking. So that's what I use those two pieces of software for. Performance overlays, perhaps with Oculus Tray Tool, although you can also do it with Oculus Debug Tool, and then setting the distortion curvature and the bit rate. And that's really it. I don't play around with anything else. So hopefully that answers your question and, and maybe it's been um, a little bit helpful. 
Uh, and as always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.